guys, Yara and Malvi here. And in this episode of Guardians of Bees, we interview two of our family friends, Randy and Rebecca. Randy and Rebecca are two local beekeepers from our area and have kept bees for more than nine years. They are also part in the farmer's market and are very active in it. Now, Randy is actually the builder of the type of top bar hives that I have as part of our Bees Are Funny A period. So, enough talking, why don't we just dive straight into the interview? Yes, but first, intro! Today. Our pleasure. Thanks for having us. Yeah, so Malvina, we'll start off with the first question here. Okay, so tell us a bit about yourself and when or why did you become a beekeeper? Uh, I guess it was probably, I should, you think we should know this, but probably about nine years ago, I'm thinking. We actually it was Rebecca that got us interested, thinking, oh, something that we might want to do. So how we got started, we went to the meetings at the college, usually every uh, second Monday at the college we have a bee meeting. So we went to probably, I'm thinking maybe six or seven, and then we thought, okay, well we want to do something. It's time to get serious. And I guess I could go on a little bit, but Jerry Bomford, who's a longtime beekeeper here, he mentioned to us, well, why don't you consider top bar beekeeper? Well, of course, being so new to anything, I didn't know top bar from Langstroth and the other type, and then uh, went on the internet and uh, we looked at it. What we liked about it was more natural way to keep bees. The bees have been around forever, and we feel they don't really need foundation to do their combing. And uh, we weren't that interested in the honey that we were going to get. So I guess for those two reasons, we always said we're just doing it for the bees, not for the honey. But yes. you know, secretly, we did want to have some honey and some bees. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So that at the college, you said, so they had like kind of like a beekeeping course or a beekeeping presentation. Is that what happened? Yeah, more, more just monthly meetings, mm -hmm. like from the members there. And, uh, actually, they do in the spring, they do whole courses for beginner beekeepers. Yes. Yeah, so that's awesome that nine years ago. Yeah, so we went on and then of course, uh, the internet's good for looking at different designs and all yeah. that. So, and then and I thought, well, we love the bees from what I was reading, there's only certain woods that they could they're comfortable with. Oh, really? and, uh, I know cedar was one, and of course I love working with cedar. It smells nice when you it cook does. it. It does. <laughs> and it weathers really nice. Maybe yes. later on we can have a better look at the original one I did. Of course, yes. So the second part of the Malvina's question, it, it did say, um, do you have like a beekeeping ground in your family? But I'm guessing you, like you said, you started at nine, year, uh, well, nine years ago. So do you have any, like, like before that? Do you have any experience with bees in your family, or? No, not for me. That was, a, I should probably have the furthest thing from my mind. Oh, <laughs> Keeping wow. bees, it was just like. I discovered that my grandfather used to keep bees. It was when he stopped when I was so young, I don't remember any of it. I just have like the brief, briefest of memories really? of him um, with his suit on. Maybe I saw a picture of him. So that's, that's my history with beekeeping. That's I didn't even awesome. know I had it, but. That's yeah. great. And finally, what do you like most, um, the most about keeping bees? Just keeping bees in general, getting your hands on doing the work? Yeah, with the top bar too, I don't know, I guess it's a little bit of patience. You work with them a little bit. And uh, what's really nice on a nice calm day when there's nothing going on, I just like to hear the buzz in the yard. I find it just so soothing and comforting. You can just hear them when they're happy, going back and forth. It's satisfying too, just watching bees. Especially when they're happy, and you hear those happy sounds, it's almost like, you know, it just seems to transfer to you somehow. Yes, it does. So, what's the next question? So, um, how did you discover or find out about the Kenyan top bar hive system? Oh, I guess I've referred to it a little bit earlier, but yeah. Jerry Bomford kind of mentioned it to me, so... And I looked into it, I thought it was just really, and what's nice about it too, I don't want to get too far ahead, but it's just, it's nice and comfortable height to work with. And uh, I don't know if it's just me, but I think the bees are generally happier and healthier. Mm -hmm. They seem, they seem to kind of know you in there. Yeah, because there's less hands on too. Yeah. You just let the bees do their thing. That's true, maybe you don't have a sense of stress because yeah. the bees aren't upset. I know sometimes when Randy's going in there and he doesn't like to wear, ever wear any protection, 
and sometimes you can tell when the bees are starting to get upset a little bit, but they generally seem much, well, they seem pretty calm. Randy's told me that during the Langstroth inspections he's gone with, he's found the bees seem a lot more aggressive. They are. So the second part of that question is, so you said that you, in all of your years as a beekeeper, you did use this kind of setup, right? That's right. Like you have. <coughs> so have you ever tried keeping bees or in like the Langstroth or any other kind of setup or just, or just this one? <laughs> no, I don't think I'd ever want to go another way. Although Barry Clark, who does the beekeeper courses here, he was president of the club for a few years. He's always trying to get me to go that way. So yeah. it was almost like a trade. He says that he'll do the top bar if I'll do a Langstrom. But, you know, honestly, I don't know. I'm happy with what we're doing. And I've got, <clears throat> you know, we got four hives now. And, you know, a person could go on and on. But I think I think it's just enough. I want to have enough to be able to manage, not yes. be overwhelmed. Yes. Not where it's considered, you know, job, too much of a job. So. Yeah, I see. So are you probably uh, going to plan on making more, like, have about four to five or six maybe or just four? Uh, I'm going to stay with four, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brandy's always said he only wants to have so many hives, but of course if we are lucky enough to get a swarm or if we have a big hive we need to split, then we, we do that. Mm -hmm. But we haven't maintained a large number of hives. We, think we had five last year, or the year before last, and they all they all died over the winter. Oh, yeah. It was really tragic. Yeah. So wh how do you guys do when you put your colonies into winter? Oh, well, of course, it insulates the bottom because the bottom is a whole open screen there, so that's the first thing that comes on. And probably mid September, that'll stay on. Mm -hmm. And then after, I do place where I can, and I'm not even sure I really have to do that, but I'll put rigid insulation on the back mm -hmm. um, to protect more the north side. Yeah. And then I've got little pieces of wood, scrap wood, because I'm a collector of everything. <laughs> So I'll set those because of the odd shape of the hive with yeah. the legs and everything. So I'll just place those and then I use like just a tarp. I'll take a staple gun and just uh, tarp around it and basically that's it. Yeah. Oh, so, oh, I'm sorry, on the top too I'll put a burlap bag. Oh yeah. Like I'll put some rigid insulation as I did last winter and it worked well. That's great. Always trying to change a bit. But mm -hmm. put a piece of rigid insulation above the colony and then um, but you were putting so the bags burlap to... bags on either side where they we moved the bees into the oh, middle right mm -hmm. and then put burlap bags on the outside. But I'm not really sure how effective those are for absorbing moisture. I think maybe the cedar shavings might be better. We should try that. In the, in the pillowcase is what yeah. you did? Yeah, that's why I put it in the pillowcase. And did you ever, ever have any problems where there's like more than three feet of snow and you had to come oh. out here and dig it out? <laughs> Actually, this year, yeah. <laughs> of course, in the winter, you have to keep the entrance yes. open as you yes. would in any hive. So. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I had to make sure it was, and this is nice because it's higher, but yeah, yeah, you're right, I did have to shovel some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. The second question is, it actually just leads on more into the colony in general. Mm -hmm. um, so, you said that you, this kind of answers the question, it's why, why you chose it. You said it was because it was a more natural way of keeping bees, mm -hmm. it's a little bit more relaxing, more calm to work with. Is, is there any other, anything you can add to that? Oh, I don't know. Like Maybe. the looks of the hive. Yes. <laughs> you know, it was funny. I was setting up somewhere and uh, I forget. Oh, no, I was at one of the courses when they, they hold the beginner's course. Yeah. I'm invited to come by and so I do a little spiel on top bar. And That's great. As an alternative way to keep bees. And I brought it out and somebody said it looked like a rabbit hutch. <laughs> so I thought, okay. I actually took a little offense to that. It's not a rabbit. <laughs> so now, other than that, what do you think are the advantages and like ad ad advantages I'm pretty sure there's more advantages with disadvantages on this type of setup. Well, the biggest disadvantage, I guess, is we're not sure how much honey you will take. Actually, it's been three years since we took some honey. Mm -hmm. So but you're never sure how much to take in the fall. So we err on the side of caution and just usually don't bother. Mm -hmm. And then, funny, this year there was a little bit where it was left and we took that. We harvested a wee little bit that wasn't in the, in the spring. In the spring. I think that's probably one of the major disadvantages. In fact, one of the uh, other Langstroth guys kind of scoffed at us for because we would stand by the natural yes. beekeeping and how much better it is for the bees. But he's like, you know, you don't get any honey, and really we haven't been successful in getting a lot of honey. Yeah, and actually, for this actually leads on to the next question. Sometimes, um, what are 
some of the other than the look and like the beekeeping in general, what are another what's another difference between this type of hive and just like a traditional one like the Langstrom? You said it was the harvesting, obviously, the shape of it, just the beekeeping in general, but is there a, any other differences? Well what I think is really nice is just it's uh when the Langstroth, which I haven't done, and of course I'm very familiar with because okay. everybody does it, it's just that you're taking heavy boxes and later in the fall when they can weigh 100 pounds full of honey, you're taking all that off. And as we get a little older, yeah. you know, it's not as easy. Yes. But the nice thing here, you're just picking up one bar at a time and it's nice height and you just do a little inspection and put yeah. it down. And, so it's a, and I don't know with the Langstroth, I don't know if I should be. There's a lot more carnage with the bees. Mm -hmm. You know, as careful as you are when you take a box off and you're, you're brushing and moving, they're coming back on. So I don't know. Very seldom will yes. a bee get sacrificed here. So yes. I, another yeah. advantage, I guess. Another thing too I like about them is that um, with the lines draw, you don't have to do it, but most of the time you're going to get pre-drawn foundation mm -hmm. that has recycled wax in it. And if people have been using different kinds of chemical. Um, yeah. insecticides for the varroa mites, um, or whatever they're called, then you get all of that accumulating in the wax. And yeah, and actually with all the natural stuff, it actually leads to um, this next question. So, um, what do you like about using um, this hive other than any other type of hive? So, um, you mentioned setup. it a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, and then, like, I've never done any, any other way yet. I'm not sure. I'm, I should never, you should never say never, but I don't know if I would do it like strong. One thing I know, I'm comfortable when I do my inspections, I don't wear anything. When I package the bees, and I didn't really have to, but you know, so I'll put my bale on, that's all I have. And then when we extract some honey, it's time to bale again because it's robbing, right? Yeah. And the bees are. Yeah, happy so do you all. have it? That actually leads to the next question, which can you explain to us like what the extraction process is? Because I know it's completely different than just Langstroth colony extraction. Oh, okay. you, you, I think you mentioned it was a little bit more hands-on. So... Well, how about, I'll just, uh, we can keep it running. I'll just bring the bucket over here. It's probably the best way is to just do a visual. Mm -hmm. you. Yeah, watch out, buddy. Come on, well, come buddy. On. So this is our extraction thing. It's a bucket and a bucket. Mm -hmm. Quite interesting. So in the bottom, the bottom bucket's food grade, the white bucket, so there's a full four inch diameter hole. Mm -hmm. And then on the top one, I drew a, a four inch thing, and there's half inch holes, as many as I could put in here. So this sits on top, and then inside the top one, there's a, you know, it's like a paint screen. Yeah, is it kind of like a cheese? Well, it's actually a nylon screen that they use for paint uh, straining. Oh, yeah, you can it's... buy them at the paint shop. Probably. Yeah, and it's like a it's buck, a buck durable. and a half or mm -hmm. something there. And it does have an elastic, but I've got this extra thing that I tied as a, a yes. extra elastic. So what we'll do, we're either Rebecca and I will pull the bar up and. Uh, it's almost like we huddle, we have we like to do this as quick as we can. So we know ahead of time which we're gonna do. Yeah. And you can appreciate the bars are probably 10, 12 pounds, a little heavy. Yeah. So we'll take it up and brush the bees. I've got a bee brush, so back and forth if it takes how many times so there's no bee that's on there. Yes. Yeah. And then we'll hold it above and just take the knife and I'll cut the bottom off and it'll fall in here. Mm -hmm. And then quickly put this on, take the whole thing and run. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We're out of here. Take we this take entire, water to, wait, the entire thing. Yeah, or? just take it all up. And then when it's in the house, I've got this good one because I broke a cheap one. <laughs> so the comb is in here, the honeycomb, and I just go boom, boom, yes. mash, mash, mash. <laughs> mash honeycomb. As, as much as you can until right, your arm is basically completely. sore. Yes. And then that's it. Just let it go. And, and then, then it it'll just... Over time? Over time it'll just drain through the mesh. Mm -hmm. All you're left with is, you know, the just wax or wax. Yeah. It's uh, you know, sometimes not the cleanest looking wax, but then you can even take it and, and purify it. Yes. But it's nice. We'll get the pollen and, and the honey too, right? Yeah, Which is nice too course. in that regard. And I actually, I think... 
that's probably one of the purest, like, like one of what you're doing, probably yeah. you make it one of the purest kind of money too. So we're almost coming to the end of our interview. Thank you so much for our time. But uh, one of the last questions is, um, since you manufactured, you, you obviously, you manufactured these hats, um, how long does it usually take to build one or like what, how, what parts do you really need to make it work? You did say you like to use some certain kinds of wood too. Yeah. So how, how long does it take to build one? How hard, how hard is it to build? Or is it, it all depends on the model. <laughs> Good question. Well, I've got a model now that I'm not going to vary from because I got three different sizes here, which mm -hmm. you may see later, but now I got a standard one. Good question about how long, because this winter, it's an ongoing winter project, and I did, I built 10. Oh. So I've got, actually there's, sold one, I got nine left, but that's here, no there. <laughs> but time, I don't know, you know, if I was to keep a track, it'd be, I'd probably be making maybe $2 an hour if that was labor costs. So it's a lot of, especially when you're doing 10, there's about 300 bars. Yes. And each bar is probably about eight or nine passes through a table saw. Really? So it's almost like you, instead of adding, you're you almost multiplying time. Wow. But yeah, and uh, so I don't know how long it would take to build one. I got, uh, I'm still trying to tr actually keep track of the material I use so that I know what it costs me to build one. Yeah. Actually, another thing I'm trying to get, yeah. get a hold of so I know it's what they have been lucky to get some uh, repurposed cedar too. It's been donated from people who have had it lying around, so it's really great to awesome. use that wood to use it for something you know, to make something new with it. So is cedar like the main wood that you like to use because yeah. other than smelling really good, it's just... Yeah, it's all cedar except the very top or yeah. the bottom edge of the bar is pine because yeah. it's a little stronger wood. Yeah. The cedar's too soft to, to be able to cut your comb and yes. it just wouldn't last. It's really great outside too. I, I don't know, it seems to weather, it's really good for weathering. I guess that's why they do things like cedar siding on houses, is yes. because it lasts for a long time. That is true. That is true. So, like even the same, the first, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, it's all good. The same five that I've done, I've used the same bars, I've never replaced anything. So, oh, really? Which yeah. is nice. I know with the Langstrom, you're, you're changing frames mm -hmm. and boxes and that, but got the same one from nine years ago. It was so very functional. Yeah, I see. So, uh, you, since the, you said it was all cedar and the, the one little edge on the top part is uh, pine. Yep. So, how do you prevent that from breaking when you like, cut the thing or does it just not break when you're cutting the comb for extraction? No, it doesn't seem to. Car carefully just run the knife along the edge. Yes. So, so as not to dig the teeth yeah, into like, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't want to. Especially if you're in a hurry and you're trying to make it fast. Well, yes. yeah, we are a little bit when it's extracting time. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. slightly fast, but, but still, yeah. The other thing I did, which is neat, too, there's different ways to, to feed them. Mm -hmm. And that was Jerry, the fellow that told me about the top part. He says, why don't you look into a hamster feeder? And boy, is it ever nice. So, of course, there's not set up now. But it's nice for the sugar water when you feed in the, the spring and the fall that it's outside and I can see the level. I don't have to go inside the hive to take the roof, open the hive to see what the level of the feeder is. But you can use a board link feeder, like the inverted jar with the holes. But you're, and then I gotta get inside, I don't know. So this is kind of neat, it just hangs on the outside. Yeah, I actually, is level. that something, is that something like, because before you started like keeping just, or designing, you have like some type of basic model of what it looks like and then you decide okay I want this I'll add this like I'll add the feeder I'll add uh, a little bit of flying works if you do that oh exactly yeah I took what I did from a few different uh, sites and I've just put it all together added, added <laughs> yeah. it to what I thought would work and what I could you know what I was capable of building I yes. guess is the main thing right it's yeah. like so many things you start off doing new I, I think what happened is that you didn't really know you were going to need all these things but as time went on you built the hive and you learned that the uh, cedar uh, for the top bar or for the bars um, wouldn't work so you changed that and then yeah. we decided yeah. we needed a feeder we realized we needed a feeder and that worked too and mm -hmm. yeah so it's just kind of a step-by-step -step learning process you start doing something and oh and whether yeah that one winter when they swarmed they had two colonies through the winter and they wintered and made it but on the designs it had I put seven holes in the bottom oh. the holes i always say they're free and the corks are really cheap yes so I, you could put more because that winter well i had 
two colonies. I didn't have enough holes to be able to handle two colonies. Oh, so it became another necessity to be able to put more holes. Did you explain to the girls that you had um, combined two different colonies in the same time? Yes, we had one on either side. Yeah, that's that's why that before this for the told us that you had to put like a divider. I think it was, yeah, it was just a, it was a, actually I think it was only two or three bars in between that didn't. So there was empty bars. Yeah. And then I put some burlap to separate them a little. So oh yeah, that's very it's good enough. Cool. Yeah. So I really like that how you added the um, yeah, the just, hamster, and it's so simple too. Yeah, it's easy to look. And of course, some days they'll empty it, and other days they'll. they'll yeah. Won't take it at all. Yeah. It's just a good choice when it's yeah, there. They fall when we put that out there. They drink it up, and we actually have to put some kind of protection around it because hornets and wasps will even rather we would like to come at it. Any, any, if there's any chance they can come at it, they will. Oh yeah. yeah. So well, you got a bigger, bigger <laughs> pest problem than I think we do. So we're lucky in that regard. Yeah. Uh, they haven't discovered us because we're too small to uh, raise their attention. But when you've got that many bees, then they're going to know we are there. Yeah, that's right. Well, anyway, thank you so much for oh, just you're a little with few questions. Blast. And is there any, like our audience, if they want to keep in contact with you guys, is there any like social media or anything? We'll write it down in the description, obviously. We'll oh, happy to there. just yeah, put my uh, email address, if nothing else. All right, and, uh, sounds good. Sure. Yeah, we'll more information I can provide. Or of course. Happy to. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if there's anybody, if any of you are interested, the link is in the description or the email will just contact. They do a wonderful job with their top bars. I appreciate their work and try the top bar out because it's awesome. I, yes. I love that kind of setup. It's probably one of my favorite setups so far. So yeah, so are we going to get to look some? Yeah, we can, let's give it a try. All it's right, a little warm, awesome. but we can try. Yes, of course.